O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth. The heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and the dry land which his hands have formed. O come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today we would listen to his voice.
Holy God, in this sacred moment, reorient us so that we may notice and receive your presence. Open our eyes to see what is beautiful and new. Open our minds to know what is enduring, what is true. Open our hearts to love what is good, and above all, to more fully love you. Whatever the ground beneath our feet, hallow it with your presence. Fill the atmosphere surrounding us just as you fill our lungs with the breath of life. Let this time of worship reveal the truth that ultimately the only solid ground we have is Christ, our Lord. Standing together on this scattered but shared sacred ground, faithful Lord, today we lift our hearts to you in one voice as we pray. We worship you, source of all blessing, and we put our trust in you because never shall your promises fail. Shine your light in our darkness so that we might live by your way of grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Peace be with you, our brothers and sisters in Christ. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us. We are still a church scattered, and maybe even more so as we head into these summer months. But we can take comfort in the fact that we are still connecting with each other in this special way of worship each and every week. We hope that as you go different directions throughout the summer, if you're on vacation or if you're with family, that you will remember that you can take us with you that you will make this a very special part of your week each and every week as we go through the summer months. We want to know how you're doing. We miss seeing you. We want you to be able to share with us things that are happening in your life. We hope that you'll take a moment and find that clickable link on our church's website that you will find the place where you can share prayer concerns with us. We read those every week. We'd like to know how we can pray alongside you um, as you go through times of struggle, as you celebrate wonderful joys that are in your life, know that we want to share those with you as we go through these next days together. Perhaps you may be worshiping with us for the first time. Maybe you just found us online. If so, we'd love for you to, to fill out a guest card that you can also find on our, our website. We'd like to know just a little bit more about you. We'd love to be able to share with you some wonderful things that are happening here at First Baptist. And to all of you, we're so glad that worshiping with us is a special part of your week. We are facing so many different struggles and um, uncertainties still as we go through day-to-day -day life. Sharing peace has become an even more important part, I think, for us in, in being the peacemakers that Christ has called us to be. The ancient words that we say, the peace of Christ be with you, have taken on a deeper and greater meaning. So I hope that as you share peace with those that are around you today, that are next to you, your family, or perhaps through a text or a call to someone at another time in this day, that these words will take on a greater meaning for you as well. And that beyond this moment, you will find ways to share peace each and every day with someone. But for now, we start where we are. So would you share those wonderful words, peace of Christ be with you, responding and also with you. Sing with me. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the same. Sweet to try. 
scripture reading comes from Genesis. Listen closely for God's word to us today. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. They said to him, where is your wife, Sarah? And he said, there, in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season, and your wife, Sarah, shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind them. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I'm old? Is there anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
Today begins a series of three sermons on passages from Genesis, well-known beloved passages set alongside the works of the French-Russian artist Marc Chagall. You'll be able to find these selected works if you download the Order of Worship, and as well uh, between the ending of the sermon and the invitation, you'll be able to see the work of art associated with each Sunday and each sermon uh, projected onto the screen before you. Why Chagall? Well, there are many reasons, but I'll name two. First, Chagall was a wonderful reader of Scripture. He doesn't explain everything away, but he also doesn't leave everything to speculation. He invites us to enjoy a kind of freedom of interpretation with an almost childlike depiction of biblical characters and stories. And second, Chagall's whimsical style, his playful and clever uses of color can offer joy and delight for all of us in these challenging, closed up, colorless, often days. We begin the first of this threefold series in the heat of the day, sitting with Abraham in the shade underneath the flap of his tent, underneath the terebinths of Mamre. Three mysterious guests have just arrived, and true to their custom, Abraham and Sarah are scurrying to offer gracious hospitality. The story never seems to disclose whether all three of these men represent the Lord, or whether one of them is the Lord and two of them are angels. But one thing is very clear. They come bearing news that is at once both wonderful and ridiculous. Where is Sarah, your wife, they ask Abraham, as they stuff themselves with bread and meat? There in the tent, he says. So the Lord says, I'm going to come back to you in this very season. And she will bear a son. Now, because Sarah was not going to let Abraham keep all of this juicy conversation to himself, she's listening to them from just inside the flap of the entrance of the tent. And when she hears this claim by this mysterious guest, she laughs. Now, what kind of laugh do you think Sarah laughs? Is it a hearty belly laugh? <laughs> oh, oh my God! Does she blow her cover by laughing uncontrollably, or is it a muffled snort? Like sometimes when you're trying not to laugh out loud, like a... like you do in church sometimes, or in class. Billy, do you have something that you would like to share with the rest of us? Maybe it was an audible laugh, maybe it wasn't. The closest we can get to know is to know what the text says, and that's this. She laughs inwardly. She laughs to herself. The Lord promises the impossible, and Sarah responds with a psh, or a, <laughs> or a psh. And why wouldn't Sarah scoff? She hasn't had the way of women since the Reagan administration. Either this mysterious stranger is drunk or he's cruel. What's certain is this claim that he makes to Abraham about Sarah bearing a child is a joke, right? But here comes the best part of the passage today. Whether Sarah's laughter is audible to the naked ear or not, the Lord hears it and he corresponds with Sarah. Why did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I really give birth old as I am? Is there anything I, the Lord, can't do? And then the Lord doubles down on the promise in due time. I will return to you, and Sarah shall bear a son. But Sarah denies laughing. What? Who? Me? Laugh? I did not laugh. 
It was uh, all that pepper I put on y'all's lamb shanks. Yeah, that's what it was. I, I sneezed. It was a sneeze is all. But the Lord says to Sarah, Oh, yes, you did laugh. Oh, yes, you did. So let's put the laser focus right here. Right here on this exchange, this laughter. I believe this is one of the places in the text that the gospel just blazes out of the story. Sarah snorts or giggles or scoffs or, what, or, pshs or whatever it is she does. And God not only listens and hears, but responds. God playfully enters into conversation with our scoffing laughter, our disbelieving mockery, our audible cynicism. God speaks. God promises. We casually disregard. God speaks again. God responds. God reveals. I have sat in the pastor's chair or in the living room with or across the dinner table from dear friends and disciples who've longed for a promise just like this one. Who longed for the promise of a child whose longing had given way to quick tears at the mere thought of what might have been. I have come to know so many of our young members in our congregation for whom this story cuts close to heart. Maybe some saw the scripture passage today and will never be part of this worship service because they, they saw that it said Genesis 18 and they said, no, not today, too much for today, too much. Nevertheless, I want you to know that you may, you may entrust your scoffing your rightful indignation, your pain, your tears. You may entrust it all to God. Give it all to God. Let God have it all. And then keep listening for the God who enters into conversation with our most compelling doubts, our sighs too deep for words, our laughter so scornful God can't help but respond. For even in Sarah's scoffing cackle, there is the seed of faith. It can't be, can it? <laughs> again and again throughout Scripture, we hear the similar questions to, how can I have a child at this age? Or, can these bones live? Or, what good can come out of Nazareth? Or, he can't be the Messiah, can he? Again and again, we express our lingering doubts and register our educated guesses. And again and again, God not only listens and responds, but God keeps the promises God has made to bless us with life and a future that we never could have imagined. And we still can't imagine because these blessings keep expanding exponentially like stars and galaxies that press the edges of the outer known limits of the universe. The good news is that God declares people of faith have a future, even when it appears both anecdotally and scientifically that it's impossible. Are you one of those who want to be a parent, to welcome a child into the world? I don't know what's going to happen, but I know this. You have a future you can't imagine in God. I want you to know that if you are a young person, looking out ahead to the horizon and everything seems bleak for so many different existential reasons that you can be confident. And you can walk convinced into that future knowing that God has prepared a place and a way for you that is more brilliant than you can possibly imagine. I want you to know
that even if you feel death creeping at the edges of your appendages and that you are staring straight into the abyss according to your doctors and nurses and all the scientific readouts and the diagnoses, that even you in Jesus Christ may look up to a starry sky and see your future. The good news is that God declares people of faith have a future even when it appears we don't. How many of us would have thought that just weeks ago that the the statue of Jefferson Davis would come down in Richmond of all places? I mean, I used to live right around the corner from that thing for like three years, and I can't tell you how permanent it looked. Or that in our sanctuary portico just days ago would be aglow with Pentecostal luminaries, with black and white ministers and friends, old and new, standing together and hoping and dreaming of a new future together. Just weeks ago, would you have thought that so many things that look so permanent and so closed off could unravel and open up so quickly and that we could learn and hope for so much? In just a few seconds, you'll see the image of Chagall's painting of Abraham and Sarah And I don't know if you can make it out, but the greening and the growth of the church is evident in the the crown of, of Isaac's head as Sarah cradles him. And the same green color is splashed over Abraham's own heart. And can you detect the faintest trace of the path of a tear from Sarah's eye down to the top of her lip? What do you doubt? At what do you scoff? That you have a a brilliant, beautiful, immeasurable future in God? I know you guys think I kid a lot, and that's because I do, but I'm not kidding about this. What? Me laugh? We look into the face of our mother, Sarah, and we see a future full of joy. A future promised by the revealing Word of God, the same Word entrusted to us by our own congregational practices. May we take this Word to heart today and know that God's Word is ever revealing and ever renewing. May we be cut close to the heart by God's revealing word and our eyes opened to the new future that lies before us. I thank you all for your faith, for your gifts of new life and new creation to this congregation, which spills out into our own community and beyond with abundance and joy. May God bless us in this new life 
as promises materialize before our very eyes even today. So if we may stand and sing our final hymn with this hope and joy within our hearts, let us sing together with joy. Oh.
Let us pray. Our Father, today our hearts are filled with gratitude for your presence, your care, your grace. We pray for confidence and courage in the knowledge that all are your children, that we may open our eyes and hearts to those we meet, help us to see their need and to show your love, and use your gifts invested in us to bring hope and life. May we do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly. We pray in the name of Jesus, who taught us to do so. Amen. I want to tell you of a unique opportunity for a continued response that some of you have right now, and that is to join up with this congregation that is born in and sustained in laughter and enjoys the promises of God that unfold week in, week out, year in and year out. What better time than now to put down a promissory note on your commitment to faith in Jesus Christ than to call this church or to contact us through our church website and let us know of your decision to come and be part of this beautiful fellowship where life together continuously expands with joy and hope. I hope if you have been considering doing so already that you will make this decision and let us know. Come, join up with us, and this pilgrim way will be yours as well. And who knows what bright future will unfold for you. Now, I commend this invitation to you and to all those of you who are already part of this wonderful congregation. I ask you to share this good news with others. Send this worship service to a friend or a neighbor and let them know what wonderful promises await them too. things, my hand is on my heart for you, for the love of our church, for the love of our city, for the love of the whole world, for the infinite beauty of God opens before us, 
as the Spirit prepares us to be sent out to love the world in Christ's name.